Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at fiberglass hull repair. How to fix a through hull hole in your boat. Now this boat was, was bought as a project boat. I knew there were a couple things wrong with it and knew I had to do some repairs. Uh, one of the things that we noticed right away before we bought the boat was that it had a uh, repair not only on the deck but directly underneath that deck repair, which actually looked pretty good, was a repair on the bottom of the hull, uh, which did not look so good. So one of my first projects on this boat is going to be to grind away that repair, see what's underneath it, and then, and then fix it correctly. It almost looks like they just did a patch over uh, you know, whatever damage was there. So in order to, to do this fiberglass repair, we, we're going to need fiberglass resin. You can you know, use any type of resin that, that you prefer. Uh, of course, you'll need hardener. That usually comes with the resin, but um, you know, if it doesn't, you can always buy that separately. Uh, I like to use disposable paintbrushes, and then we're going to use fiberglass mat. Um, this is the cloth that all of the strands of fiberglass run in, in a multitude of directions. And for this project, it's just going to be easier to work with. In addition, I like to use acetone uh, to, to prep the work area and degrease it so that the uh, fiberglass resin adheres nicely to the, uh, to the fiberglass. And lastly, we're going to use an angle grinder. Uh, this is a flap sanding wheel. It's a coarse grit. Uh, this is a 36 or a 40 uh, grit flap sanding wheel. And it really uh, grinds the glass very nicely. In addition to that, you always want to wear a respirator whenever you're grinding uh, fiberglass. Once I started to grind away the old repair, uh, it was obvious that it wasn't a hole through the hull, it was a crack. And whoever fixed it originally uh, never even ground away that entire crack, uh, which is a problem because anytime the hull flexes, that crack would get larger and larger. So the first step was going to be to grind away the entire crack, uh, which I did exposing two uh, holes through the hull. I then tapered those um, so that it would be like a knife-like uh, edge close to the hole and it the fiberglass would get thicker as you went away. Um, you want to have a nice large taper um, because you're going to build up the fiberglass um, and replace it. The next step is just going to be to clean the entire area with acetone. Just put it on a cloth, wipe it all down. And we're going to build up the fiberglass in layers. Um, so it's going to fill that void and, and then also fill in the, the V-shaped uh, taper that we ground uh, in the glass. Now, because we're working on through holes, you don't really want to fiberglass um, you know, saturate the cloth and, and apply it directly to the hole. You want to make a patch. Um, what I did was I laid the uh, mat over the hole and just with a black magic marker kind of marked out the size. And you want to start to cut uh, some mat just so that it covers the hole. And then the next piece you make a little bit bigger, probably a half inch bigger all the way around. And then the next piece another, a little bit bigger than that. Uh, so that you're going to end up with, you know, four or five or six pieces uh, to start with uh, that's going to, um, you know, just progressively get larger. I'm working on a piece of parchment paper just to the side. I like to pre-saturate each piece of the fiberglass mat just by dabbing uh, with a disposable uh, paintbrush. And then I'm going to lay that on the side and I'm going to um, saturate the next piece, which I will place right on top of that. Again, I'm not placing these directly on the hole because then if I was to tap down on it, I'd be pushing that mat into the hole and ending up with a depression which is really not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to saturate each piece and I'm actually going to flip it and saturate both sides of each piece. Flipped it over, put it on top of the other patch, and then I dab, dab, dab right on the top to saturate both pieces and you really want to make sure that each layer is, is nicely embedded into the previous. Uh, then when I'm all ready, I'm going to completely coat the work area with resin. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, the, the first patch I'll do is I'll just take that whole piece of parchment paper, 
kind of hold it in position or flip it into position and put the patch right into place. Then I'm just going to peel away that parchment paper. And then I can use that same brush to go back and, and dab all around the outside perimeter. You don't really want to press into the hole. The whole object here is just going to be to let this uh, first coat dry, and that's going to allow you to have a solid work area to work from. We are definitely going to have to fill that little depression because gravity is going to pull that uh, fiberglass and mat into the hole a little bit. I'm going to work on the second patch. In this patch, instead of flipping uh, the parchment paper over, I'm actually just going to pick up the patch, lay it into position. Sunday and on that Wednesday, you got the call. And it, like the following Monday or Tuesday, he was supposed to pick me up. I get the call. And again, I'm going to dab all around the outside edge. Uh, my friend Anthony uh, pointed out that 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 patch, which was behind the original, really should be underneath, just because of the flow of water from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. Uh, you never want any edge. Now these are going to be coated over. They're going to have extra layers, but you know, better better safe than sorry. So once that dries, uh, now I can go back with the angle grinder, and, and again, I'm going to use that same coarse grit flap sanding wheel, and I'm going to want to grind away all of the edges. You really want to rough up all of the fiberglass that you put down. Um, you want it nice and rough so that it accepts the next layer, you know, nicely. And you also want to make sure that you grind into that depression from the hole. So you rough up every square inch of the epoxy, of the, of the resin. And then before I put the next coat on, I will also wipe this down with the same acetone. And working with the angle grinder, you know, really does a, a quick job. And once you get used to it, it, it's a nice tool to work with. So the next layer, um, it usually is, is larger. You want to just progressively get larger. But because there's a depression, especially in that, in that front uh, hole, through hole, hole um, I'm going to actually fill in that depression a little bit, just with smaller uh, pieces of the mat. So I'm going to take each small piece, and just like I did before, I'm going to saturate it on both sides by dabbing with a disposable paintbrush and lay it in. And I'm really just building up thickness here. So now I can I can dab each one of those into place right over the hole because you know that first layer is nice and hard and it gives us a nice structure to work off of. And I'm really just going by eye to make sure that it's it's filled in adequately. So as long as the, as the resin is wet, you can continue to add layers. If it starts to kick and starts to get hard, uh, you have to stop. Um, and if you want additional layers, then you have to grind, um, rinse off or, or wipe down with the acetone, and then you can apply additional layers. Uh, depending on how um, the temperature is outside, you know, the hotter it is, the quicker it's going to kick. Uh, if you're in the sun, it will quick, quick kick faster. Uh, than if you're working in the shade. And now that I've filled in uh, the depth on that hole, you know, built up the, the thickness a little bit, uh, now I'm going to progressively get larger with the patch. So there's nothing hard about this. Uh, it's a little time consuming. You know, there is a, certainly a little bit of waiting in between, you know, for the drying time. And then the final patch is, is the full size. 
Again, I saturated one side prior to laying it down. And I'm going to completely saturate this. You don't want it to be overflowing with resin. You really just want it to have enough resin uh, to saturate the cloth or the mat. What you don't want is any voids or any air bubbles. Now they make um, fiberglass tools. I, you know, I chose not to use one today uh, because this really is really a demonstration uh, for the do-it-yourselfer. The tool is, looks like a little uh, roller, you know, like a little paint roller, but it's metal and it's got grooves on it, and it really presses, you know, each layer of glass uh, together nicely. But most, you know, most end users, uh, boat owners, are not going to have that tool. You can you can certainly work uh, just with a paintbrush, like I'm doing here. Now, one other little trick of the trade is I always wear gloves, but I always wear two pair of gloves. So when I'm done working, I can just take out that outer pair and I'm ready to go. Now, back to the angle grinder. I'm going to be a little bit careful here. I don't want to go uh, too deep. Again, I'm just roughing up all of the, of the surfaces, kind of evening out the edges, you know, like the outside edge of one piece of the mat and just, you know, sanding that nice and smooth so that there's an, a nice transition or that you don't see the transition between the edge of the mat and the existing glass. One of the, the final processes is to uh, use a oscillating sander. I just did this with an 80 grit and I went over the entire, the entire area, just smoothed out all of the surfaces, almost like doing body work on a car. Now this is the bottom of the hull. Uh, you know, it, it absolutely does not have to be uh, perfect. You can, you can sand this uh, depending on, you know, where on the boat you're located. You know, you were on the side of the hull where you're gonna see it, you would really want it to be, uh, com you know, completely smooth without any blemishes. In addition to sanding, uh, this is an option. You can coat the entire surface. This is a, a fiberglass um, bondo. So it actually has fiberglass strands in it. Uh, it really binds very nicely. Again, I wiped it down with the acetone as always. And then you can just um, lay on a really, really thin layer of this uh, bondo, fiberglass bondo and then sand that off. And that's gonna fill in you know, any of the, of the tiny little scratch marks uh, that were created from the rough grit um, you know, dis, dis sander. And then I went back over that with the same oscillating sander. Um, I think it was about 120 grit. And then after this was all sanded uh, to my liking, I gave it one more wipe down with the um, with the acetone, and it was it was ready for gel coat. Now this is just a, a paint on gel coat. You can get this down at any marine store. This is um, it gives a real hard uh, waterproof uh, finish uh, to the repair. Most fiberglass repairs that you do uh, really require a gel coat when you're done. And that's basically it, a, a very easy do-it-yourself fiberglass repair uh, for through hull holes uh, on, in your boat uh, or, or really any fiberglass applica application. There's nothing difficult about this. It is a little bit time consuming. You have a little bit of sanding to do and a little bit of grinding to do. Wear gloves, uh, wear a respirator and take a cold shower afterwards. Get that fiberglass dust off of you without opening up any of the pores, uh, otherwise you're gonna end up being a little bit itchy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and by all means, check us out on the web at www.diyeasycrafts.com. Thank you very much.